or bring it in, GOP Congressman Gary Palmer from Alabama. Uh, Congressman, he of course was recently reelected as the chairman of the Republican Policy Committee for this Congress. Congressman, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on, Hallie. So let me start where my colleague on the Hill left off. Will you vote to support this new one-week funding extension? Well, I want to see what's in it before I make a decision on how I'll vote on it. Uh, that's been my standard operating procedure since I've been in Congress. Okay. With what you've seen so far, do you believe that if that extra week passes, it could buy lawmakers enough time to also get to a COVID deal? I hope so. Um, um, what I expect is a, a clean um, continued resolution to get us into next week. And I, um, uh, I'm hoping that, that we're going to, to get a, a COVID relief package out next week. I was hoping that we would have done this back in September. Uh, there's 130 something yeah. billion dollars sitting in the payroll protection plan right now that could have been made available. Um, we have a bill on the floor to, to do that, but uh, we couldn't get uh, Speaker Pelosi to bring it up. And, and there's another 400 billion, I think, that's in the Main Street program at Treasury that could have been repurposed. So. Uh, at some point, I'm hoping that uh, we can get together and, and, and help uh, small businesses and families. There are some sticking points. There's also a question about the possibility of stimulus checks, which is not in, in these discussions at the moment. One of your Republican colleagues over in the Senate, Senator Josh Hawley, says he's pushing President Trump to veto any COVID relief bill that does not include direct stimulus checks. Do you believe that that should be the position of the Republicans here? Well, there's so many people hurting, uh, and particularly in the business community and, uh, and the family-owned businesses, that I don't want to start uh, driving stakes in the ground over these issues, but I do think that, that we need to get some kind of uh, stimulus relief uh, to people. Uh, we need to do some other things that could help some folks, like on the flexible spending accounts, uh, where the money is, uh, mm -hmm. people who put money in those accounts are going to lose that money unless we act uh, to allow them to roll it over or get it back. There are a number of things that we need to do that would directly help individuals, but also uh, help get these businesses back on their feet. Yeah. It sounds like, and Congressman, I want to make sure that I'm understanding sort of what you're saying here. It sounds like you would like to see stimulus checks and any kind of a deal next week, but it is not a deal breaker for you. Am I accurately paraphrasing? Yeah, uh, I would like to see the stimulus checks. Okay. But like I say, there's 130 something uh, that, that's available right now through payroll protection plan if, if Speaker Pelosi would just allow that money to be utilized. I want to ask you about the defense spending bill. That is something else that is obviously uh, in front of you and your colleagues. President Trump is tweeting this morning he's going to veto. He's asking House Republicans like you to vote against it. How will you vote on the NDAA today? I want to look at the, at the total package and, and make a decision after I've had a chance to look at it. I've got some serious concerns about it, um, but at the same time, uh, I understand that uh, we have some national security issues that, that we cannot continue to politicize our, our defense spending. China is uh, now has a bigger Navy than we do. Uh, they're advancing in their techn uh, military technology at a very rapid pace. And to continue to, to put political things into, into these bills, I think, is in the long term uh, going to be very harmful um, to our ability to protect our country. That vote's coming up soon, so, Congressman. When will you make a decision on that? And if it passes, are you prepared to either override a veto or not to make sure that, for example, as you're talking about, U.S. troops get paid in time? I'm not going to vote to override the president's veto. Okay. But I will, uh, uh, let me ask you about your home state of Alabama. I'll leave my staff this morning. We'll discuss the bill and, and go into the details. Go ahead. No, I appreciate that. that no, that's a, that's a newsy answer from you, so I appreciate that. I want to ask about your, your state. We've been talking in this show, as you might imagine, about the COVID vaccine, about the, the surge in cases in this country. Alabama, your state is hitting new records for hospitalizations. That safer at home right. order, I think, expires on Friday, end of the week. I'm struck by a story that we published here at NBC of a former Alabama state senator, a Republican, who passed away from COVID last week. And his last words, according to his wife, were, we messed up. We let our guard down. Please tell everybody to be careful. This is real. Do you believe that the governor should extend the stay-at-home order, Congressman? Is that something you'd support? 
I don't think we can continue to do the stay at home orders. So uh, I understand that uh, the, the consequences of, of people getting COVID, uh, but the death rate has declined dramatically. Uh, I think the hospitalization rates are, are up, but our ability to treat it uh, have dramatically improved. The other thing though that's going on, Hallie, is that we have, we're going to have a record number of people die from drug overdoses. And because of, of shutting people inside, we've, we've seen people turn to drugs. We've seen uh, a major increase in suicide. Uh, by the end of this year, we're probably going to be uh, somewhere in the range of, of 125 to 150,000 combined overdose deaths and, and suicide deaths. Mm. And I understand that the CDC is projecting over 75,000 overdose deaths, but when you talk to law enforcement and, and, and coroners, they'll tell you that probably 15 to 20 percent of the people who die from drug overdose deaths, that's not what shows up on the death certificate. So we're fighting two battles here, and uh, and I think people have got to be smart about taking precautions uh, to protect themselves and their families. But I don't think we can shut things down again. Okay. Um, before I let you go, I want to get you on this topic. Uh, I've seen your tweets, I've read your tweets and your statements about the president's legal fights here. But I have to ask you, when Joe Biden, when he wins the Electoral College majority on Monday, will you acknowledge then that he is the legitimately elected president of this country? I don't think I'm willing to acknowledge uh, a winner in, in this race until we've gone through the legal battles. Uh, I have, I have yeah, absolutely no doubt. 36 of those no 53 doubt. cases presented by the president and his allies. I'm sorry to interrupt you. We have a bit of a delay. Have been thrown out by judges. It's not the media or pundits deciding these cases. It's judges who are saying there is no evidence. These legal battles are unsubstantiated. And as you know, on December 14th, the Electoral College vote will be locked in and Joe Biden will be formally the president-elect. That's not good enough for you? I want to see evidence presented to the Supreme Court. And I am convinced that fraud took place in Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and possibly Arizona. And I think okay. there's evidence out there. And I, all of the, the, the electoral materials, the election materials are, have to be presented. Okay. Uh, Congressman Palmer, we appreciate your time. We